in. Then I'm going to mute myself and let um, Lisa. Okay, hello. Good, good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Lisa Fielding. I am the program director of the Respiratory Care Program. Uh, and I uh, also have our director of clinical education with us. Uh, if Kathy would wave for us. <laughs> and uh, we also have one of our instructors, Kathy Sloan. She's waving now with us. Uh, so we can hopefully address any issues or questions you may have about respiratory. And I guess I would like to just start out with um, what, we, what we actually do as respiratory therapists. Um, most of you may know, but I know I didn't know when I even really first got interested in this field. Um, I thought we went out and gave breathing treatments to people with asthma and COPD and uh, no idea how really, really lovely and involved this field is. And uh, we deal with anybody that is on a ventilator, um, anybody that has any kind of breathing problems in hospitals, at home, in step-down facilities, in doctor's offices. So it's um, a very rewarding field, and it's in a very exciting field. I've been doing this since 1984, and some of, some of us have been doing it before then. And um, the technology that has changed over those years has been astronomical, and it's it's been very it's been very exciting. It's a very exciting field. You go in in the morning if you're working in a hospital, you'll have an assignment where you're going to have to see patients, and then next thing you know. Um, there's a code in the ER. Somebody was brought in through the ER that's not breathing. You go. You're in charge of breathing. That's what respiratory therapists do. We actually breathe and oxygenate our patients. So you go back, you're done with your code, good or bad outcome. You're going on your merry way to do your treatments. And next thing you know, there's a rapid response, which means a person's in trouble. They're not exactly sure why, but they need help. So guess who goes? You go, all right? Um, traumas, uh, we go to every emergency in the hospital, which makes our job very exciting and very unpredictable. So if you're a person that needs to have structure, that you need to have you know, A, B, C, um, that's not gonna happen. And you have to learn how to adapt to in quick situations. And again, our job really is mainly to oxygenate and ventilate get air in and out of our patients. And we work in the ICUs, CCUs, burn centers. Um, and I, I guess that's about it. We do have somebody with us, actually Kathy Blaine and Kathy Sloan, uh, have, both have worked at CHOP along with their teaching. And if they would like to interject about, because I am not the pediatric neonatal person, and I know a lot of people like to get into this field because they want to work with children or with neonates or babies. So Kathy Blaine, would you like to interject? The unmute. Can't hear you. Okay, hang on. There you are. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I will let Kathy Sloan talk more about the NICU and things like that. But the other thing I wanted to add is, um, you know, branching out into doctor's offices of like pulmonary physicians. We do hyperbaric oxygen on critically ill patients. Uh, we work in all the skilled nursing homes. Um, we, a lot of people are in medical sales. Uh, we do a lot of in-services and education with the nurses and doctors in the hospital and out, um, teaching them new devices. Um, and, and basically, um, what Lisa was saying was, you know, what. When the poop hits the fan, we're the ones that get called, okay? We're always there in emergencies. And so we, one of our most important skills is to learn working with the nurses to serve as patient ad advocates to try to help doctors make safer decisions, basically. Um, and that can be very challenging depending on the doctor and the situation. Um, so in our field, interpersonal skills, and the ability to get along with everybody is absolutely critical. I mean, that's just as important as how much academic knowledge you have. All right, I'll let Kathy say a little bit more, Kathy Sloan, about um, pediatrics and NICU, okay? All right. Hello. Um, so 
I have been working at CHOP for 33 years. And you don't look that old. I'm only 40. <laughs> uh, so we take care of the smallest of babies, 800 grams. Um, and we take care of all through their pediatric course. Even we have some adults that we take care of because if they have a specialty or a certain disease process that is unique to pediatrics, there might not be enough physicians who know the knowledge of that disease course in the adult. So they will still be followed at CHOP um, where I work. It is fun. I like my babies. A lot of people have trouble working with kids because yes, unfortunately, we do see some kids that die um, at a young age and it's hard, but you have to learn to adapt to your working environment. I like it. I enjoy it. I'd rather work with kids and adults where people maybe like Lisa rather work with adults than kids. It's to each his own, but it's a very unique experience. Um, respiratory, I enjoy respiratory um, very much. I think it's a great field to get into and there's a lot to learn and the technology is always changing out there. If you have any questions, ask. Lisa, did you want to talk a little bit about um, what needs to be done to apply to the program? So the requirements for application and then maybe what the program's like as far as the schedule? Okay, I actually, um, I was going to, I was just going to actually share something with them if I could real quick and I, and I can get back mm -hmm. on that track. Mm -hmm. All right, so can everyone see what is respiratory therapy? Yeah. All right. This is our national organization, the AARC.org, and it has a lot. Anybody can go on the website. It stands for American Association of Respiratory Care. So if you're not quite sure what respiratory is all about, there is a little video here. And then if you go down, it kind of talks about what we, what we do uh, and where we work. I already kind of talked a little bit about what we do, but this will tell you about where we work, okay? in hospitals, in ICUs, in ERs, newborn pediatric units, operating rooms, patients' homes. And that's becoming a big deal now because there are patients that um, they're really trying to not have in the hospital for a couple reasons. Hospitals are very, they're really the worst place to be when you're sick. They're so germy and noisy, you can't get any rest. Um, so if we can get patients out to the home quicker, uh, and give them the proper care at home, it's gonna benefit everybody, including the patient the most. Skilled nursing facilities, doctor's office, you can get into education programs, smoking cessation and asthma. You wanna fly on a helicopter? Go for it, okay? Um, Jefferson right now, the uh, respiratory therapist will go out, if, if say, I, I, I was working at Lansdale Hospital, say we had a, um, a baby born that needed to go to a neonatal unit. Jefferson would fly the respiratory therapist and a NICU nurse over to Lansdale, pick up the baby and transfer them back. I've actually gotten to fly on a helicopter. Um, we went, I went down to Atlantic City Hospital to pick up a burn patient uh, back in the day. It's, it's really exciting. Actually, I, I learned how to fly after that because I, was, I just loved it so much. Um, but that's out there, it's another, it's another thing that you can do. Um, you can get involved in some areas with case management also. Uh, so these are just some of the things that you, um, you can think about. Um, there are specialty care areas, long-term long care, um, neonatal pediatrics. It's a very specialized field. Okay, again, the surface and air, uh, air transport. Pulmonary rehab is actually becoming uh, bigger because uh, patients really that, that have lung difficulties, they don't a lot of times get better. So we have to try to make them stronger and live a better life if possible. And pulmonary rehabs are starting to take off a little bit more than they have, okay? Sleep study is another field. Now there are sleep technologists, but there's not usually enough of them out there. So another thing that we can do is move into performing sleep study because if a person goes apneic, and I'm not, I'm not sure if you know what that means, but it means they stop breathing. Um, we know what to do as a respiratory therapist. So a lot of these sleep labs are hiring respiratory therapists to work there because if a patient does go apneic, 
uh, and does have a cardiac arrest, we know how to handle it because that's what we do for a living, okay? Again, you can get into education. I chose to get into education and also to work in a hospital to keep my skills up, critical care, and possibly, I haven't seen too many respiratory therapists in case management in this area anyway, but it doesn't mean it's not in other areas. Some people like to work in the home care environment, and that's definitely a possibility. Pulmonary function testing. You can be a pulmonary function technologist, uh, and you work nine to five, Monday through Friday, no holidays. So uh, it's not for me per se, but it, it is for a lot of people love it. There's a lot to learn in pulmonary functions. It's kind of neat. Uh, management, you can move up the ladder. And that's just some of the, some of the, the highlights of that. Now, I did want to um, talk to you about our program as far as what we do. Can everyone see the respiratory care technology screen? Okay. So this is in the course catalog under degree and certificate programs, the respiratory care technology program. It gives you uh, the information that you would need to know. We are an accredited program through the Commission on Accreditation for Respiratory Care, it's called COARC. Any, any program you wanna get in, if it's respiratory or physical therapy or nursing or um, diagnostic medical imaging, any program you ever choose to get into in your life, make sure it's an accredited program. Because if it's not an accredited program, you just went through how many ever months of your life and you're not gonna be able to work in that field because you're not gonna be able to sit for your national boards or whatever, however you are accredited, however that program is accredited, okay? So make sure we are in, uh, in good standing with COARC. We also have the National Board for Respiratory Care. They administer our examinations. Our, we just had some students that went to clinical in July. We got them in and they graduated. So now they are sitting for their boards their um, credential boards so they can become registered respiratory therapists and go out in the hospitals and help, help during this pandemic. It was a rough six months for a lot of people, uh, patients, therapists, nursing, anybody that worked in the hospital uh, and, uh, you know, and people at home also dealing with all of this. But the hospitals were inundated um, with these COVID patients and we were there on the front lines working and helping. And now these students that have graduated want to go out and help also. So under, this is again under your, the course catalog. Um, this tells you all your, uh, your applicant uh, require, requirements. Um, so you have to have taken Bio 109 within the last five years and gotten a C or better. Okay, hopefully a B or an A. All right, because you're going to be dealing with anatomy and physiology big time. Um, you have to be able to have been have placement for uh, algebra or math 118, um, placement for English 101, and a grade point average of at least 3.0. You also have to take the Kaplan test. Okay, now I'm going to skip down here and you can look at this. Uh, you do have to get child abuse clearances and you do have to do. Uh, criminal background checks. And just another, another thing about applying, um, right now you would have to go on to, um, you could just put this in search, put respiratory care, and then you would be able to get onto a site where you could apply for the program. As of right now, um, you need to download the um, application, print it out, uh, fill it out and mail it in. The address is on there. It gets mailed to the main campus. Um, they're working on trying to get you to be able to email your application in. The application started today for respiratory. We do have some openings for fall 2021. We're hoping to be back on campus. Um, you do have to have a child abuse clearance and you will have to do a criminal background check and a, and a drug test. Um, now, this is our actual sequence of the classes you would have to take. The first semester, you would be taking Respiratory 100 and 101 with a lot of other classes, okay? Um, it's, very, it's a very difficult program to do 
having to do all these other classes along with your respiratory classes because they're difficult. They're, you, it's a lot of studying every day. People that um, work a lot um, and they have to take all these classes or even if they don't have to take all these classes, it doesn't usually go well. There's always an exception to every rule, but people that work full time really usually do not do well in this program. Uh, the program is all, is, is, the classes are all during the day. There are no evening classes or weekend classes. I've had people ask me that. It is a 22 consecutive month program uh, and there are clinicals involved where you would have to go at sometimes 40 hours a week. So it's a very involved program, but it's a very involved field and we have to get you prepared before you graduate to be able to take care of these very ill patients on these very sophisticated machines. Okay, so that would be your fall semester, your spring semester, you'll be out in clinical one day a week and taking pharmacology and airway management, two very important classes. Um, and, you'd, and then you'd have to also be taking these classes. Now I'm gonna get back to that in a minute. All right, and this, you would be going during summer one, taking classes and summer two, so it's consecutive. Summer two, you're in clinical 40 hours a week between the first and second year. The second fall, you'd be taking two, two very involved respiratory classes again here, and they recommend bio, uh, microbiology. All right. Um, your fourth semester, public speaking, two very involved, this adult critical care and cardiopulmonary pathophysiology, two for very involved uh, classes. This is where, both of these classes is where we try to prepare you with the ventilators. Uh, we have, we have, Oh, right, well, we just got approval for three more ventilators. So we'll have about 10 ventilators available to us for you to practice on and learn on, which is awesome. Gives you a lot of great hands-on to be able to figure out how these machines work. And now that you also have two other classes you have to take, all right? And then you have one last clinical that is six, it's basically six weeks long for summer one, and then you would be able to graduate. All right, so. My suggestion to you is to get as many of these classes done as possible. So if you want to really get into respiratory and say you, you uh, need that extra year to maybe get your 109 done, take as many sciences as you can take. Um, you have to take 109 to be able to get in. Then you have to take 110, bio 110. You have to take chemistry, either 101 or 110 and you need to take microbiology. So they're all four credit lab courses that are very involved. Um, if you can get most, if you can get all of them out of the way, you're gonna have a lot more time to spend on your respiratory classes uh, and, and it would be beneficial to you if you could do that. Okay, is there anything I forgot there, Laura, that you might've asked me to go over? No, that was very thorough. I don't see any questions in the chat, but for the students here, do you have any questions about the career or the program? And if you haven't signed in with your name and instructor's name, do that. Any questions? Yes, I have a question. Okay, Betsy. Hi. Um, I, I kind of signed, I kind of came in late, so I still have to sign in. But my question is, because um, I'm kind of indecisive between the nursing and the respiratory therapist program, and I know they work pretty close together. Um, now, when I was looking into it, um, I was advised that the application deadline um, is later on. It's later than like the nursing program. So I, I was told that we could apply all the way up until like um, June or something. Is that correct? Well, yeah, you can apply until the program is full or um you can apply i mean you can apply till june 1st yes that's a debt that's a priority deadline but if we're not full by then you could still apply my suggestion to you is if you um want if you're considering that to email me at lfielding at ccp.edu or mm -hmm. you can email the nursing program and ask them specifically because we we have a fair amount of students that were accepted to start this fall, um, this month, well, last month now. <laughs> um, oh, you mean this year, not next year? Next year, the application process started today. You can apply to respiratory. I, I'm assuming, Laura, do you know, is it nursing also today? Yes. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, I would, if you're thinking about, you, can, you can't apply to both, I don't believe. I think you have to either apply to nursing or respiratory. Right. Um, so if you're not sure, um, you might, this is going to, this is gonna, a strange year, you know, um, because we had students that were not able to start in the fall that were accepted. So we are allowing them, uh, if they would like to start, they get first priority if they would like to start in the fall of 2021. Hmm. So we already have uh, about a half a class filled, um, okay. if not more. Uh, we're, I'm, you know, I'm talking with the students now to see if they want me to hold their spot or not. Um, so my suggestion to you is to think about it, um, but try it. I would apply. You can always, you know, if you apply and you could always back out, but at least if you apply, you would have, you would be in the system and, and the, your, your application would be being worked on. Well, the thing is, um, see, I, I, I'm a transfer student, so I did take a lot of the courses. Like, I've taken speaking, like the public speaking class. I've taken sociology, all of that. And I did take all the sciences, but all my sciences expired except for a and 2 So I have to, I took chem, I'm taking bio now, so I still have to take my um, micro and a and 1 um, So what I, I, I have to wait to apply, though. I can't apply until I take a and 1 How? Yeah, how long ago did you take uh, AMP one? I took AMP one. That was two thousand and who ten. So it's been over ten years. Yeah. But AMP two, I took um, in two thousand fourteen. So okay. that's still you know, but so that's yeah, still you, I can still yeah keep you yeah you would have to take the one oh nine again. So could I do I, I have to wait to apply though? Yes, it's a requirement to apply. You have to have okay. 109. You won't be accepted. I mean, you can apply, but you won't be accepted till after yeah. your 109 is done and you get a C or better. Um, so if I've waited until after the spring semester, I can still apply, but you're saying though the classes are like the fall 2021 is already halfway filled. Correct. Okay. And you'd still you'd have to take the Kaplan test too. But it sounds like you're pretty you're, you know, you had some, some classes under your belt, so you know what you need to do to study and, and uh, yeah. get a decent grade. But yeah, I mean, you, I, um, you can check with nursing, but if there, I think they, I don't know if their requirement is the same for biology. Uh, I think you have to take 106. It's 106 yeah. in M 110 or high school. So I, can I just jump in here a second? Um, Betsy, when were you planning to take the Biology 109? In the spring? Yeah, in the spring. Okay, well here's what you should do, and a lot of students have done this in the past. You should send an email to Lisa or myself telling, telling you what the situation is, and we will keep you in mind. We'll put you on a list so you'll, you'll have a heads up. So at, when you complete the Biology 109 in the spring, like at the end of April, beginning of May, We'll have you on a list so we'll know to go back and look at your application. You see what I'm saying? And yeah, yes, but if, it, if the, program, the program may be full by then, but you don't know for sure. Yeah, yes. so I, that's what I, what I like. So, say if I did email you, would I be, would you guys let me know if it got full before I was done with my screen course? Uh, yeah, we, you, you can email me anytime and just right. we can keep in touch. Okay, great. All right. I'll do that. That way, you know, I can determine what to do because I'm still indecisive about which program I want to do, but I know one or the other because I know they work so close together. So I would, I would also recommend, Bessie, that you, do you work in a hospital at this point? Um, not right now. I've been like really focusing on school, but I do have 10 years of um, like, you know, working in nursing homes. I have 10 years of experience. I would suggest if you have friends who are th- respiratory therapists or nurses that you try to shadow them for a day, okay, just to, to see what they actually do, okay? Now, right. some places like Penn, you have to go through this whole rigmarole like you're joining the FBI. It's very, it's, it's tough, okay? But mm-hmm. hospitals are not that stringent. So if you have someone who works at a hospital that you might be able to shadow to see what they actually do, I think that would help you make your decision. Okay. Right. And that's part of the reason too. I took, I'm taking this course to help me, you know, I didn't know, you know, cause I know we do like virtual shadowing. I didn't know if right now with COVID and everything, if they're allowing us to physically shadow. 
Well, that, that's why you'd have to have an employee there who would advocate for you and ask if you could come in one day or what, what kind of arrangements they could make. Do you know what I'm saying? I don't know from hospital to hospital. Some hospitals are much more stringent than others, but maybe by the spring you could do it. Do you see what I'm saying? If, right. if it is not any worse in the spring. Right. Okay. Yeah, and Betsy, do you have a connection with nursing? Have you been able to talk to anybody from nursing? No, I haven't really. Um, now, I did attend the Zoom meeting like this one. I did the nursing one. Um, I did attend that. So I got some information from there, um, you know, like as far as the requirements and stuff. Um, I'm pretty much like I can apply for nursing in this, you know, as soon as I'm done with my bio in December. So, but um, I'm, I don't know. I still, I still want to weigh out my options. So, but I did, I did speak to them. Okay. Spoke to, you know, did the Zoom meeting, but I haven't directly spoken to anyone from the nursing department. Okay. Ivar, is there a suggestion you have for somebody to contact for that? Or? Uh, uh, Betsy, you can contact me and then I can kind of direct you. Mm -hmm. um, Lisa Johnson is a really good person as far as um, checking in and she's the, the professor who gave the talk on Zoom. I believe she gave out her email, ljohnson at ccp.edu. Yes, but, I got that. Yeah, I did. Yeah, you okay. can contact her. But I want to follow up to Betsy's question or can, you know, decision. Um, and I wondered if you could tell us, so yes, they were closely together, but why did you choose respiratory instead of nursing the three of you? Me? Mm-hmm. Um, well, I, I actually went to school to be a health and phys ed teacher and I graduated in 1980 and there were no jobs uh, available back then. And my mother actually ended up in a hospital and had breathing problems. And I ended up talking to the rest. I never even knew what a respiratory therapist, I never heard of a respiratory mm -hmm. therapist before. So I actually got into it um, because of my mother really and her lung issues and just talking to respiratory therapists that were, had been taking care of her. And um, I never look back, see, it's great. When you're working with students, um, what is the big, you know, the, the, the draw or how do those uh, programs and careers differ? Is there um, a certain thing that would make a student a better fit for respiratory than nursing? That's, that's actually a very good question. Um, I don't know if I know the correct answer to it, but it's a very good question. And what I would say is that a lot, I, we ask our students when they, the first day of school, why they became, wanted to become a respiratory therapist, why they decided on this. And there's a fair amount that actually say to us that they have had some family members that have mm -hmm. had some breathing problems and that's why they get in. Um, we have some that say, um, I don't know, it looks like I can make a lot of money. Um, <laughs> And it's a, it's a 22 consecutive month program. So I thought I would try it. Um, and you know, you got to admire their honesty. And we've had some students that d tried nursing and didn't like nursing. Um, and what do you guys, Kathy, Kathy, what do you, what do you think about that? I know a few oh, students have said they don't want to change bedpans or they don't want to bathe big mm -hmm. people and they don't, you know, where, even though you learn about the whole body and respiratory, you do focus just a lot mm -hmm. of the focus is on the respiratory system and you're concentrating on that area. So you're not having just one or two patients taking care of them from head to toe. Mm -hmm. So some of the yeah. nurses do that to me. Bedpans, do they? Yeah. Nurses don't do, they, that's the, the lower Nurse, level. Nurses, nurses do sure they do. Nurses sure they do. do oh yes, they do. Yeah. I'll let somebody tell you they don't, but yes, yeah. they, you know, Yes, they, they bathe the patient, change the patient, yes. get the patient on the commode. I mean, they might have help with, you know, I've helped many of nurses I've seen in clinical, but no, they do it. They do it all. I always thought that was like the yeah, anyway, let me, let me jump in here. Let me jump in here. There are people who are AIDS, but nurses do everything. Mm -hmm. we do things. If you don't like bedpans, you shouldn't be in health, okay? I'm just telling you right now. You don't like blood, all right? Then you're going to have to be very careful what health career you choose, because almost everyone has blood. If you don't like poop or you know or suctioning, like respiratory therapists, we love to suction. 
All right, we, co we compare patients, their mucus, how disgusting it is, okay? We're really into that, okay? So, I mean, if you're, if you're one of these people who is just crazy like this, you'll really work out great, you know? But if, you're, but if you're one of these people that doesn't handle that kind of stuff well, then it's pr health care is probably not for you, okay? The reason I got into it, I, was, I had several friends recommend it to me, um, but what I really like about it is, as Lisa was referring to before, we're in different places doing different things every single day. Okay, no day resembles any other one. And, you know, some days are nothing but one disaster after another. Some days are much calmer, but we're in every part of the hospital seeing every type of patients, you know, depending on how sick they are. And um, so you don't get bored, you know. Um, and if you're in nursing, you're typically on the same floor in the same ICU, and, you know, you have the same kind of patients most days. In respiratory, that's certainly not the case, so... And I do want to say, like, um, I was only saying, because, I mean, I didn't, uh, I was an aide for uh, 10 years, so I'm totally not grossed out and didn't, you know, everything. But um, I just didn't know. I, I didn't know that nurses, because I worked in a nursing home. The nurses never helped me, <laughs> you know, so that's why I'm like, I didn't no, know. That's, that's disgraceful, I'll tell you right now. It never helped us. <laughs> you got to remember, in a nursing home, sometimes there might be one nurse for, like, 10, 15 patients. Right. You have more aides. When you're in the hospital, the ratio is a lot different. You might have one nurse dependent, like in the ICU, it could be one to one, one to two. On the floors, it could be one to four, one to five ratio of nurse to patient. So there's more nurses around than like in a um, long care facility. And one thing you always want to remember is that we're all a team. So the nurses, the respiratory therapists, the x-ray, the uh, maintenance, the household, we all have to work together or it doesn't work. Absolutely. And nobody, nobody, even physicians, nobody is better than anybody else. We are all workers in a hospital and we are all there for the care of the patient. So if you don't, if you want to do this for money, it's, it's going to get old very quickly. Okay. And it's not going to be worth it. You're going to be burned out and say, oh my God, what did I do? I just wasted a couple years of my life for education, maybe three or four years doing this. I got to find something else. Don't do it for the money. Do it because you care about helping people and you want to be part of a team. It, it really works. If you, if I'm a nurse and I don't help, uh, or if I'm a respiratory therapist and I don't help uh, the nurses or the uh, nursing assistants that are in there, mm -hmm. um, guess what? Nobody's going to help me. And it's not what it's about. It's about us all in there for the good of the patient and helping each other. Um, you're always going to have people that, um, are unprofessional, uh, and that's not. There's nothing anyone can do about that. But you want to be professional, work together, and be a team for the good of the patient. Yep, absolutely. Yes, excellent. Any other questions? Okay. So the students have your um, email, Lisa, and sign in, please, if you haven't done so already in chat. And I will um, post this recording or send this recording out to all your instructors so you can listen to it again if you came in a few minutes late. Okay. Oh, I didn't get the email for Lisa. I'm sorry. Um, or what was the email? I didn't get that email. It's L Fielding. L for Lisa and Fielding. F-I-E-L-D-I-N-G at ccp.edu. Okay, great. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you all for coming. Thanks, yes. everybody. I wish you all a lot of luck. Yeah, we hope to see your applications. Thank you, yeah. luck, everyone. All right, bye-bye. Bye. 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 <laughs> Thank you, Lisa and Kathy and Kathy. Oh. You're welcome. Yeah. All right, so um, do you have, is it, if, or if we're still recording, is